Hello guys, welcome to your new review video. In this video, we're gonna review Tamron 72-300mm lens. And this lens is for the Nikon system. So this is how it looks like. And this lens doesn't have the vibration reduction on it. So if you are shooting at a very high focal length, so there is a chance that you can have a, you know, a handshake if your hands are shaking. So there can be a camera shake due to which there can be lack of sharpness in the photo and it can have like the camera motion blur because the hands are shaking okay guys if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet so please subscribe because i'm gonna bring a lot of new content related to camera gear lenses and photography tutorials in general and please subscribe and also press the bell icon so that you always get notified whenever i upload a new video so let's begin the video guys so this lens i got uh, second hand for around uh, 100 us dollar which is a really good price and kind of it was unused and if you extend the lens it becomes this much big so it's a pretty pretty big lens and in terms of weight it's around 400 grams so not very very heavy but not very light either and if you talk about the aperture for this so when this lens is at 70 so it has a f4 aperture and when it goes to 300 then the aperture is 5.6 so if you are shooting at 300 and f5.6 aperture you can get a really good uh, background blur everything will get totally blurred out with this lens so it can be a good choice if you want to do portraits but if you are looking for, for you know wildlife or sports this is not a great lens it's a very slow lens even if you talk about the autofocus on this lens so i can show you that it will hunt like crazy and it will make a lot of noise so you can hear the focusing noise it, it is very noisy like if you compare it with nikon afs lenses which are more silent and their autofocus is also much more faster and this lens also have a macro capability so you can see the switch over here so it can uh, switch between normal mode and the macro mode but the macro mode only works when you are at a focal length of 180 uh, mm or higher so from 180 till 300 uh, you can actually switch to the macro mode and you can take some really close up shots of let's say you want to take some nature shots or you want to take photos of insects or some jewelry or that kind of macro shots so you can do that with this lens okay guys now i'm going to talk about some of the good thing about this lens and then i'm going to talk about some negative things as well so the good thing is the price for this lens it is very very cheap and also the build quality is pretty good because this lens still have a metal mount i can show you so if i de attach this lens so this has a metal mount because some of the other cheaper lenses they have a plastic mount so it is always better to have a metal mount because that is more robust and uh, more reliable and it is quite lightweight i think around 300 grams or 400 gram so it's it's a nice you know easy to carry lens and uh, if you talk about uh, the price it is very cheap and it has a macro capability as well built into it and the uh, focal length is pretty good 70 to 300 is a really good focal length so with this focal length you can do some candid photography you can do portraits as well you can do some kind of a travel photography as well with this lens so these are some of the good things about this lens now talking about the negative things about this lens so i'm gonna put uh, onto the screen some of the sample photos that i've taken with this lens so while i'm talking you can also see the photos that i have taken with this lens and to be honest this lens has lack of sharpness the images that i took with this lens are lacking a lot of sharpness because if i compared this with the uh, nikon 55 to 200 or 18 to 200 mm lens those lens have much more sharper image compared to this tamron lens even the nikon 72 300 lens is much more sharper compared to this this is very very soft like even if you compare this lens with a kit lens 18 to 55 this is lacking the sharpness and the images are really very soft if you want to increase the sharpness in your image maybe you have to uh, use a higher aperture maybe you have to shoot at f8 or f9 but if you are shooting at uh, that uh, uh, aperture then uh, there would be less light you have to you know increase the shutter speed and if you don't have enough light then it will you know cause uh, uh, the image uh, to be blurred due to the camera shake and uh, uh, yeah so i didn't uh, like uh, the images from this lens if you want to get like really sharp image maybe you should manually focus because sometimes it can inaccurately focus it can do back focusing or front focusing which is a bit frustrating 
for uh, this lens and uh, talking about the video I'm gonna now put onto the screen the video that I have taken with this lens hello guys so right now the video that you are watching is from D5100 camera and I am having the Tamron 70 to 300 lens mounted on that so right now I am at 70mm focal length so I would show you when you go from 70 to 300 so how close you can get to the subject so you can see uh, there's a bit of snow and like even you can see this construction site so let's see at 70 it looks like this so now I'm gonna slowly zoom all the way till 300 and let's see how close I can get so at 300 I can see like this and at 70 I can see like this so it's a pretty handy zoom range if I try to you know uh, show you the view of the city so at 70 it looks like this so these buildings are almost two kilometer far uh, more than two kilometer away from me so now I'm gonna slowly zoom in so I can go a bit close to the subject but the problem is uh, there is a lack of sharpness in this lens otherwise it's a really good lens if you can actually uh, you know focus manually you can get it to focus very very precisely but I found there is a bit of lack of sharpness compared to a Nikon lens because this is a Tamron lens and optically it is not as good as a Nikon lens but it does the job you can use it for portraits as well so let's say if I try to you know show you the background glow that you can get uh, with this lens so I'm gonna you know try to uh, focus in uh, this pillar So you can see now this uh, pillar in front of me uh, let me go to 70 so at 70 it looks like this this is tech sharp and the background blur is also quite good because the aperture right now at 70 is f5 but when i go to 300 so let's go to 300 so aperture is gonna be 5.6 so 300 mm focal length and f5.6 aperture gonna give you a really good background blur so you can use it for portraits as well and you can get really good out of focus background with this one but it is not a very fast lens so i would not recommend it for a wildlife or sports photography but overall since this is a very cheap lens you can get it second hand for hundred dollars or something or even lesser depending on the deal you get beside that this lens also doesn't have vr so because of that there is a strong chance that you can have a you know camera shake uh, while you are shooting at a very higher focal length because having a vr for a telephoto lens is a must nowadays because that will help you in making a very steady and very sharp image and beside that uh, yeah there is nothing much good to talk about this lens overall like it's a very uh, average lens it performs very averagely in most of the scenarios and yeah um, i mean it is a it just give you a you know 70 to 300 range but it's not that great of a lens i would say okay guys so my conclusion about the video is that even in the video when you are uh, trying to autofocus sometimes it was hunting a lot and it was not even autofocusing while i was uh, doing the photography it was able to autofocus uh, accurately and uh, uh, quite uh, quickly most of the time but in case of video sometimes you know it was just not able to focus so uh, I had to uh, add occasions, uh, you know, switch to manual focus just to get the, the precise focus. And sometimes, like even when it did autofocus in video, it was autofocusing, uh, uh, back focusing or front focusing. So because of that, there was lack of sharpness in the video, guys. So I would not recommend this for video because it also makes a lot of noise and hunting as well. So it's not a great lens for video. Maybe for photography, you can use this lens. If you shoot at a very high aperture and you maybe shoot in a very good lighting condition because then you can have a very high shutter speed and it will reduce uh, the chances of uh, uh, the camera shake so guys conclusion final conclusion should you get this lens in 2021 well i would say you can skip you should rather you know invest in maybe 55 200 mm uh, nikon lens or 18 to 200 mm lens and there is also another nikon 18 to 300 mm lens as well even nikon 70 to 300 mm lens is much better compared to this lens because this lens is very soft and the nikon lenses are much sharper and better than this and they also have the vr capability in them uh, which this lens is lacking 
so this is a very very poor average lens and this is a lens uh, i would never recommend to anyone to buy guys all right guys so if you like the video please press the like button you can also go and follow me on instagram if you have any question you can leave your comment over here or you can directly message me on instagram as well i always reply to each and every one of you then i will see you in the next video guys